everyone. It's great to be with you once again. My name is Kathleen Collins and I'm a violinist in the Cleveland Orchestra. Today we're going to talk about uh, violin, find out some more interesting things and notice lots more details about the violin and talk about a very specific thing in music that you can both um, see and hear very easily if you're paying really close attention as an audience. To just warm up our audience skills, I'm going to play a little snippet from a piece that I played in our last session by Antonin Dvorak called Humoresque. recognize that melody. So today we're going to be discussing something that's called tempo. Tempo is another new word, another Italian word that we use in music to describe something that you'll be able to hear and see, I hope. Um, again, I'm not going to tell you just right now exactly what tempo means. I would like to see if you can guess that um, from how I'm playing these next two little pieces for you. Um, I'll play two different pieces of music. They're actually quite different. They're by different composers. Um, and they're, they're very contrasting with one another. I'd like you to listen very, very carefully and see if you can tell either your parents or your teachers what you think is the biggest difference between the two different pieces that I'm about to play. Here's the first piece. difference that you noticed between the two pieces. If you were to tell me that the first piece was very, very fast and the second piece was really slow, I would definitely agree with you. Um, and that's exactly what we're talking about in music when we talk about tempo. We're talking about how fast or slow the music goes and everything in between. Um, when you're playing something really fast, we use a couple of Italian words to, um, to describe that. It could be allegro. That's a kind of fun word to say. Can you say allegro? Or even faster than allegro is presto. Presto is another great fun word to say. Um, on the other end, of the spectrum, the really slow music, you might have an adagio, another nice word. Can you say adagio? 
or even slower than an adagio is something we call a largo. There's actually a place that I've been to before in Florida called Key Largo. And it's a place where I always think life must move really, really slowly. Um, but anyway, if you noticed a lot about what the violin was doing, I'll, I'll show you too the difference between what it looks like and fast playing compared to slow playing. If you watch the violin play, I want you to watch both what happens with the bow here and what happens with the violin fingers. So first of all, we'll do fast playing. Are you ready? Watch really carefully both the bow and my violin fingers here. So what did you see? You probably noticed that my bow was going very fast back and forth, but I was only using a very little bit of it. If I tried to use the entire thing, I wouldn't be able to move that fast. It's just too much distance for me to move my bow fat as fast as those notes go. And then you might have noticed too, my fingers over here were moving also pretty fast so that I could change the pitches really, really quickly. Now let's see what happens, what the difference is when the violin is playing very, very slowly. Again, watch what happens with my bow and with my fingers. Here we go. So you probably noticed that I was drawing my bow much, much slower and I had enough time to be able to use more of it. And at the same time, since the notes weren't changing so fast, my fingers didn't have to move as fast over here either. So that's something visually with your eyes, you can see very, very clearly on a string instrument. You can see without even using your ears, you can see whether the, the instruments are playing quite quickly or slowly. Um, musical tempo is kind of like a pulse. So if you feel, if you put your, um, your right hand over on your left side of your chest, you'll be able to hear your heartbeat. And your heartbeat changes speed depending on what kind of activity you're doing. So if you're running, especially if you're running in a race, your heart might beat very, very quickly. But when you're just resting, you're sitting down at your desk, you're reading a book, or you, if you're sleeping, your heart is gonna go much, much slower. So now for the very end, what I'd like you to do is stand up and we're gonna feel what musical tempo really feels like. So I'm gonna start you off with a speed and I want you to sort of march along in the same tempo that I'm, um, that I'm playing. So we'll start off with a very slow tempo and we'll do it about one, two, one, two. was a pretty slow march to be marching to a largo tempo, wasn't it? The next one that we're going to do is the allegro. So I'll start you off at it's a much faster tempo. So get ready. We're going to march at a, at a faster pace. One, two, ready, and...
lot of fun, wasn't it? It was very lively. You might notice too, if you feel your heart rate right now, you might notice that it's moving a little bit faster just because we picked up our feet at a faster tempo. Um, excellent. Now to, to the close at the very end, I would like you to listen to the Allegro little piece one more time and see if there's one more thing that I really, really want you to, to notice. Um, it has to do with what we talked about in the last section, dynamics, and I wanna see if you can find the place where I all of a sudden play fortissimo or really, really loud. Most of this little allegro piece is played in a more piano dynamic, but there's one place where I really have to play fortissimo. Let's see if you can find that spot. All right, here we go. prepared to learn some new words and to notice more things about the violin and playing string instruments. See you next time.